Hello everyone, and today we will talk about how to connect supply wire of the TPS sensor to the wiring of the vehicle. And here we have a two different ways. The first way, and the simplest way, is to connect supply wire of the TPS directly to the positive lead of the battery. Let's watch on the typical schematic diagram. Here is it. As you can see, it is very, very simple. I highly recommend you to install a fuse in series with this supply wire. Also, I recommend you to install this fuse as close as possible to the battery. The TPS can operate in two different modes. The first mode is normal, mo normal operation. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, when you turn on the ignition, the reference voltage at reference pin becomes near 5 volts and TPS wake up and start normal operation. When you turn off the ignition, the TPS see that the voltage on the reference pin is near 0 volts and it goes to the sleep mode. In the sleep mode, the TPS takes current from the battery, which is about 10 to 20 microamps. This is a very, very low current. So, if you will not drive your vehicle about a week or two, the TPS will not drain your battery totally. So, this is not a problem and this schematic will work. But if you switch the TPS to the measuring mode, and in this mode the reference input of the TPS uh, became a measuring input, and you can connect there a signal of oxygen sensor or intake air temperature sensor, and in this measuring mode converter will not go to sleep mode, even if you turn off the ignition. And it will constantly take a high current from the battery near 20 to 50 milliamps and it will drain a battery within mm, several weeks. So if you will not drive a vehicle and forget to switch it to normal operation mode, you can get a totally drained battery. Uh, to protect our battery from draining, we can connect the supply wiring of the TPS uh, in other way. Uh, we should connect it uh, like that, so when we turn on the ignition, the supply voltage must be turned on. And when we turn off the ignition, the supply voltage must be turned off. How we can do this? It's very simple. All we need is just find some point under the hood where we can take the supply. And the most simplest way is to connect it to the supply wire of the ignition coil. Here is it. You can see, for example, on my vehicle. But the main problem is to determine which one of the two ignition coil leads is the supply because on the second lead, which is connected to the ignition amplifier or ignition commutator, there is a pulses of voltage with an amplitude near 300 volts. And this is a very high value and this pulses could damage the TPS. So we must determine the correct lead of the ignition coil and connect supply there. How we can do this? It's also very simple. First of all, we must disconnect one of the wires from the ignition coil. Next, we must turn on the ignition and measure a voltage on both wires with a multimeter. Okay, here is a multimeter and we must switch it to 20 volts DC. One of the probe we put on the negative terminal of the battery and with 
other probe, we will take voltage from one wire and from other. Here you can see that on this wire is 0 volts. And this is exactly that wire that we don't need and must never ever connect to this wire because this goes directly to the ignition amplifier and on this wire when gel will be working there will be a high voltage pulses so let's check second wire and here we see 12 volts and this means that this is exactly the wire we need and we can connect our supply wiring just in parallel with this wire and all will be fine okay the owners of the volkswagen golf 3 or passat uh, can ask what they should do because on these vehicles uh, there is a square ignition coil and power supply lead and uh, switching lead of the ignition coil is not available because it has an integrated ignition amplifier so this is not a problem at all all we need to find a correct wire is just to remove the 3 pin connector from the ignition amplifier for example I'll show you it on my vehicle and also we switch ignition to the on position and check with the multimeter each pin of this connector and only on one pin we will see uh, 12 volts and this is exactly that wire that we need to use as a power supply for our TPS sensor now I'd like to show you what we can see with an oscilloscope on both leads of the ignition coil okay here is a first example I specially connected an oscilloscope's probe to wrong wire its switching lead of the ignition coil and here we can see how ignition works uh, here we can see uh, storing energy in the coil next we can see a very high voltage pulse in this time the switch in the ignition amplifier opens and next we see how the spark burns in the down right corner you can see an amplitude of these pulses as you can see it is dangerous wire and we never ever know must not connect must not take from the supply for our TPS could these pulses kill our TPS? no they couldn't they just will damage if you connect the power supply they will just damage a special protecting diode on the board uh, it is not very big problem to replace it but it will take a little bit of time and money yeah 50 cents so to prevent this we connecting to the supply wire of the ignition coil let's check it with an oscilloscope too and here we can see that the amplitude voltage is no more than 20 volts and the average voltage is near 14 volts so it is very safe power supply point for our TPS and this noise is not a problem at all, at all and all will work fine okay guys for today that is all in the next videos we will talk about uh, idle switch about um, intake uh, temperature sensor and about precise tuning of the TPS but first we need to know how all this system works and how it makes a fuel mixture and other interesting thing we'll talk about it a little bit later in the next videos so see you bye bye and wish you all the best